Hi there, welcome to That Board Game Show. My name is James Wood, and today I'm going to show you Dungeon Roll, a dicey dungeon delve dripping with danger for one to four players. Dungeon Roll is a push-your-luck style dice game, played over three rounds, each of which is broken up into four phases. We have the monster phase, the loot phase, the dragon phase, and the regroup phase. I will explain each phase as I come to it. So I'm going to just start by diving straight into the gameplay, because I think that is the best way to explain how Dungeon Roll is played. The first thing we do is we gather our party of companions. So we pick up our seven companion dice, give them a shuffle, and this is now our party of companions for this particular dungeon delve. We delve through the dungeon three times in each game of dungeon roll, and my party today consists of two thieves, a champion, a cleric, and three scrolls. Now you'll see these scrolls are not companions per se, but they allow me to manipulate the dice. They represent wisdom that I have, insight, skills. <laughs> and I can use these scrolls to reroll any number of dice. So those can be quite handy. I also have my hero card here in front of me, who is a crusader, who can later in the game, once I have gained enough experience, be upgraded into a paladin but I'll get to that when it happens. For now, my Crusader has a speciality. Fighters may be used as clerics, and clerics may be used as fighters. That will make sense shortly. And once per delve, I can exhaust my hero to do their special ability here. Again, I will explain that as it becomes relevant. There are several more heroes to choose from in the box. I have just chosen to play with the Crusader today. So I have formed my party, I have chosen my hero, we set the dungeon level die, which is on this very cool looking d10, which goes 1 through 10, and the 10 is a scary looking dragon face. So we set our dungeon level die to 1, we put that over there, that represents the first level of the dungeon. So in the first level of the dungeon, there's not much to be scared of. We take one dungeon die and we roll it. And this is the monster, or in this case, potion that we have to defeat. So let me quickly go through the different symbols on the dungeon dice. We have this potion, which I have just rolled. We have the dragon symbol. Anytime you roll a dragon die, it will go off into the dragon's lair, off to the side of the table. And anytime you have three dragons in the dragon's lair, the dragon will attack you. And there's special rules about how you have to fight the dragon, which I'll get to when it happens. We have standard monster dice. We have goblins. We have skeletons. And we have oozes. And each monster can be defeated by any hero. Or any number of a given type of monster can be defeated by a matching hero. So for instance here you will see this is our fighter, can defeat a skeleton, an ooze, or open one chest, or he can defeat all goblins. And that same rule applies to each of the various companions you have with you. Your champion, which we fortunately rolled over here, allows you to defeat any number of any monster. So for our first delve, we stumbled into the dungeon, and there were no monsters around, we just saw a vial of this funny looking potion. Well, what's a potion, you may ask? A potion can be used by any die, including scrolls, to quaff any number of potions. For each potion quaffed, revive one party die and choose its face. So as you use these companions, as these dice fight the various monsters, they go off into the graveyard. So potions allow you to revive your heroes. 
So for the first level of the dungeon, I'm going to simply ignore that potion. I breeze past it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not interested in a little potion lying on the ground. And I delve to level two of the dungeon. So now, I roll two dice. Pick them up. Give them a roll. And we have a skeleton and an ooze. Neither of those are particularly good because even though I've got this champion here, he can defeat all of one type of monster. He can't defeat multiple different types at once. He's not that clever. You know, he can fight off lots of the same kind of thing, but if, you've got, if he's got lots of different things attacking him, he doesn't quite know what to do. So let's see. I think let's use one of these scrolls to re-roll these two dice. I don't like those. So that scroll goes off into the graveyard and I'm going to re-roll these. And that was a lot better. I'm going to throw away the scroll to pick up these two potions. And in so doing, I will revive two of my companions from the graveyard. So I can take these two companions and I can bring them back to my party as any hero I want. So let me bring back, let's bring back a fighter and I will bring back a mage. So now I've got all the different types of companions and I can now proceed to level three of the dungeon. Turn the dungeon die, pick up three dice, give them a roll and oh my goodness gracious me, this level of the dungeon is just swarming with monsters. Oh dear, because now I have to use three dice to defeat those three dice, or I can use this last scroll I have, which I will do. I will discard that scroll and I will reroll these. That's a lot better. Okay, here's what I think I'll do. I will quaff that potion with this thief and I will bring back the scroll as a champion. So that is taken care of. I will then open both of these chests with my other thief. So my other thief jumps in there with his little lockpick set and he opens up both those chests and we now get to delve into the game box, which is this awesome treasure chest box, which you can hear has got a whole bunch of tokens in it. Those tokens are treasures. So now I delve into the chest without looking and I take out two treasure tokens. I now have two dragon scales. Each dragon scale is worth one experience point. Each pair of dragon scales is worth two additional experience points at the end of the game. Okay, so that was my thief doing his job. Off he goes. I will now delve to level four four of the dungeon, pick up four dungeon dice, give them a roll, Whoop. and I have two skeletons and ooze and a potion. Now, let's see, I will just tackle these one at a time. So I will use this cleric to defeat those two skeletons, and he goes boo, off to the graveyard. I will use this mage to defeat that ooze. And I will ignore that potion. I don't care for potions at this stage. I want more monsters. So let's proceed to level five of the dungeon. Take three, four, five dungeon dice. Give them a roll. Oop, all over the table. And let's see now. I have got two goblins, a skeleton, a chest, and a potion. Hmm, I'm not really in any dragons. That's interesting. Oh well, I will use my fighter to defeat those two goblins. Plunk, plunk, plunk. I will use a champion to defeat this skeleton. And I will use my other champion to open this chest because I think I'm going to stop at the stage. So I delve into the chest again, give it a shake. Don't look, pull out a scroll, which I can add over here and I can use that just like a scroll on a die. 
I have no dice left, so I will now proceed to the regroup phase. I will retire to the tavern and pass the party dice. Well, I have no one to pass them to, so I'll pass them back to myself. If the level die reads 10, you must retire, if ever you get that far down. And then you seek glory in the next dungeon level. But first, I see here that I made it to level 5 of the dungeon. So that means I get 5 experience points from this little pile of experience over here. Little Roman numeral 5 token goes here in front of me. And now you will see that at the bottom of my Crusader card here, it says 5 XP to level up. I now have 5 XP. So I can level up my Crusader into a Paladin. My speciality stays the same. I can use Fighters as Clerics and Clerics as Fighters. Or I can exhaust my Paladin to use Divine Intervention. Discard one treasure token to defeat all monsters, open all chests, quaff all potions, and discard all dice in the Dragon's Lair. So that is incredibly powerful. Okay, so that was my first of three delves. Let's delve on to the second. We reset our dungeon level die to one. We form a new party of heroes and pick up all of our party dice, give them a roll. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of scrolls. And a lot of champions. My, my, my. What a lot of champions I have. Level one, roll one die. And it's a potion. Level one of these dungeons just seems to be a, a stockpile of potions on the wall. Oh well. Let's proceed to level two then. See if we can find something more interesting. I found a Skeleton and a goblin. Oh, bothersome. I don't like it when I have two different things to fend off. Oh well, I will use my scroll to re-roll both of those. And that was not much better. Oh well, I will use my champion to defeat that skeleton. I will throw away this scroll and I will quaff that potion. And that means I can bring back a die of my choosing. So let's bring back something and turn it into, let's say a mage. Let's get some different types of companions out there. Righto, level three of the dungeon, rolling three dice. And there's our first dragon of the game. A skeleton and an ooze. Oh gosh, that's not good. Okay, the dragon automatically goes off to the dragon's lair over there. And he will come and fight me if ever that builds up to three dice. I now have to deal with the skeleton and this ooze. Hmm. I think let's use this champion to defeat one of those. And we will use this fighter to defeat the other one. And I'm getting a bit thin on dice here, but I can push my luck quite safely because of this special divine intervention ability that my paladin now has. That's basically a get out of jail free card. So if there is a dungeon level that I'm unable to deal with, I can exhaust my paladin and clear the table basically, which is rather handy. So let us proceed to level four of the dungeon. Three, four dice. Then we have two oozes, a goblin and a chest. Okay, well, let's send my mage to deal with those oozes. Kaplawi. I will send my fighter to deal with that goblin. Kapow. And I shall ignore that chest. I don't particularly want to open a chest. Although, in hindsight, I think I will open that chest actually. Boom! I will send my champion in to open a chest. Give this a shuffle up, grab a treasure, and I now have a fighter. Which is rather handy. Let's put that over that side. 
So do I push my luck to level five? I think I will just. Let's do it. I have no companions left, but I have my special ability here. So we take two, four, five dungeon dice. Roll them up. Make sure we push that one off to the side because that wasn't part of it. We now have three dragons in the dragon's lair. We have a skeleton and we have a chest and we have a potion. Okay, I think I'm going to use my special ability <laughs> to discard one treasure token, which is a bit unfortunate. So that goes, I'll discard the scroll. I can go back in the treasure chest. To defeat all monsters, open all chests, quaff all potions, and discard all dice in the dragon's lair. Well, there we go. So I open this chest, I quaff that potion, which means I get a hero back. So let's just bring back a champion, shall we? I defeat that skeleton, and I get rid of all the dice in the dragon's lair. Let's dial in here and pull out my... Oh, and, I'll, and in order to use that, I have to exhaust my paladin. And what did I get? I pulled out another dragon scale. Ooh, these dragon scales are just lying everywhere. So now I think I'm going to stop there for this level. I am going to regroup because going to level six of the dungeon with just one companion is a terrible idea. So I shall now regroup. I shall gain my five experience points. I shall reset the dungeon level die to one and I shall go for my third delve. I haven't defeated a single dragon this entire game. My goodness, let's just set those off to the side there. Okay, we will refresh our paladin and we will delve to level three for our party, which is just chock full of champions. Oh my goodness me. And one little scroll. So level one, we roll a single dungeon die, which is a dragon, so that goes off into the dragon's lair. Proceed to level two, we'll roll two dice. Ooh, we might be fighting a dragon pretty soon. So that dragon goes off into the dragon's lair. And I will defeat that ooze with a champion, seeing as I've got so many of them. Send my champion in to go squish the ooze. Proceed to level three. Roll three dice. And get a slightly less helpful roll. Now, I can't quaff that potion or open that chest until I have defeated that skeleton. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to defeat the skeleton with the champion. Again, I have surplus of them. Clatter clang, and I shall quaff that potion with this scroll. I'll throw the scroll away in order to pick up the potion and quaff it, and I will bring back a fighter. Let's bring back a fighter, shall we? I've got a nice collection of different companions, and I will ignore that chest. I think it's better to keep my companions with me. So I shall proceed down to level four of the dungeon. Give these four dice a roll. Oh, there's that third dragon. Okay, we're gonna be fighting the dragon now. So I will defeat the goblin with my champion. Whoop. He is taken care of. I shall open both of these chests with my thief over there because treasure is always tempting so let's go grab some treasure one two treasures and i received oh those are rather interesting ones those are the town portal which allows you to collect experience equal to the current dungeon level and escape the dungeon well that's very handy you can basically just teleport your way out of the dungeon whoop and I found a scepter of power, which can be used as a mage. So basically I have two additional companions here. And I now have this town portal. So if I'm in a pinch, I can just escape from 
the dungeon, which I might be using pretty soon, although it is worth two experience points at the end of the game, so it's worth hanging on to if you can. So now I'm going to fight the dragon. These three dragon dice from the dragon's lair come over here. And my champion, my mage and my fighter, boof, attack the dragon. Because you always have to use three different types of companions to defeat the dragon. They have to gang up together, they have to work together as a team in order to defeat this dragon. You can't just send in a whole bunch of champions, he needs the help of a mage and a fighter. So there we go, we have defeated the dragon. Whenever you defeat a dragon, you get one experience point. And you get one treasure, you steal a treasure from the dragon's hoard. So that treasure is, very appropriately, a dragon scale. How's about that? I have two sets of dragon scales. Lovely. Okay then, and those guys are all off in the graveyard? Oh dear. Now, one might think I would be mad to continue because I have no companions left. But technically it's like I ha still have two companions because I've got this Vorpal Sword and this Scepter of Power, which can be used as a fighter or a mage, respectively. I have my Town Portal to teleport out of the dungeon, should I need to. And I have my Paladin's special ability to be able to defeat all monsters, open all chests, quaff all potions, and discard all dragon tokens. So this is where the push your luck <laughs> element of this game comes in. I'm going to now push my luck to level 5 of the dungeon. Whoop! I'm going to roll 5 dungeon dice. And let's see what happens. So, I proceeded to level 5, I will put those two dragons off to the side there, and it doesn't look like that quite paid off, because each of these tokens at the end of the game is worth a point. And in order to use my special ability here, I have to discard a treasure token. So I'm basically giving up a point, so essentially if I'd stopped at level 4, I would have gained four experience points, and had all my tokens. Now, in order to survive this level of the dungeon, I would have to give up one of these, both of them in fact, in order to defeat these two skeletons, because neither of them are clerics. However, I do have my speciality here, which says fighters may be used as clerics, and clerics may be used as fighters. So I can use this Vorpal Sword, which can be used as a fighter, to defeat both of these skeletons, because I can use it as if it were a cleric. So that gets discarded back into the chest. Those are defeated. And then I think I'm going to push my luck one last time, because basically I just gave up a point to get a point. I would rather get a bunch of points if I can. So you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna to push to level six. So this spins around to level six and I roll all the dice that are left over. You'll see here, I've only got, I can only roll five dice because that's all that's left. The dice in the dragon's lair remain there. So let's roll these and I'm hoping for a whole bunch of chests because then I can get a bunch of treasure. And that didn't happen. I rolled the dragons over there. I rolled the bunch of skeletons and a goblin. Hmm, oh well, that is a shame. So what I shall do is I shall discard this treasure token using my paladin's divine intervention. I shall discard this treasure token to defeat all monsters, open all chests, quaff all potions, and discard all dice in the dragon's lair. Which is not brilliant. So essentially I just gave up two points to get two points. So it doesn't really always pay off to push your luck. But oh well. That is the end of that. I get my six experience points for making it to the sixth level of the dungeon. Each dragon scale is worth one point, but then each pair of dragon scales is worth two additional points. So these dragon scales are worth four points and four points, respectively. This town portal, because I did not use it, is worth two points. 
So that is 8, 9, 10, plus 15, 16, 17 points is 27 points in total. And that means, if I look at the back of the rule book here, there's a little solo rules explanation here. Play three rounds as per the normal rules and go for your best score. So basically this played out very much the same as a multiplayer game. And what did we say? I scored 27 points. So according to the townspeople and near this dungeon, I am a seasoned explorer. So there you have dungeon roll. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the show.